Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to City Skylines and we're going to carry on doing a bit more work with our district over here. The Henry Ashworth Plantation is doing well now. We, we've actually generated some profit here rather than uh, non-profit, uh, rather than horrible, horrible losses. Uh, we, we've got more now being uh, di diverted into flour and animal products, so we've got some good outputs coming on here. We don't have so much going in here anymore with imports, so we're sort of growing our own crops. I've been told I've been overthinking this just a little tiny smidgen, like worrying about um, cotton going to the wrong place, when in actual fact everything is just producing crops. Right, we, we don't need to worry about having um, one particular item and we, we don't need to worry about particular crops. It's just animal products and crops. That's all we've got to worry about. And then there's the processing facilities that will transform them into other items. So we've got like the flour mill over here. Crops come into the flour mill, gets turned into flowers and then they get uh, taken away again. Now... I've got, at the moment, I've got some barns, I've got some storage, I've got these large grain silos over here. I want to keep these on balanced. I don't want to be changing those around. And then I've also got some barns as well. I've added in a load of barns as well. These are all balanced also. So I've got, I've got quite a few of these now that are balanced. Um, they're, they're actually, like, over full for the most part. We, we, we got a little bit too much in them. Uh... Why it won't let me click on it when it's up there? Are you sure about that? Um, but yeah, they're, they're sort of over full a little bit. So like the slaughterhouse here, we get crops coming in, we get animal products coming out, in theory. And we've got some workers in there as well. This one over here keeps having multiple problems with crime and garbage and stuff like that. But I've also been told that this one is kind of... You, you've got to look at it as the entire area and not just that one little spot. So if I go here for crime, it's perfect everywhere else. But it's like that's like the accumulation of everything all the way around. So unless all of it's perfect, that's not going to be perfect. Um, it's a slight bug that's in the DLC at the moment, but it's nothing that we actually need to be worrying about. Now, we do have some issues with traffic here in places and it seems that most of the, the issues Coast Guard is oh. warning of a tsunami approaching the uh -oh. area residents should avoid roads and waterfronts a tsunami has struck the city take uh. caution and avoid roads and waterfronts until the water recedes okay we've actually got a tsunami in deep water i don't think i've actually seen one of these before which way is it going to come from or which way is it oh i see it's moving up here it's moving up the up the valley here slightly, um, up through the bay, and it's not done a huge amount of damage. Right, it, it it apparently it's it's done some stuff, but it doesn't really look like it's going to be much of an issue. Although, look at this, look at this sort of moving away here. Um, I think in actual fact, because we don't have any early warning system for tsunamis or anything, it's already come all the way up through here and slopped over Hans Stagger, um, and just kind of that was the tail end of it that we just seen there. So we could do some early warning for tsunamis, and I, 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 there's got to be some somewhere. Where's the early warning for the tsunamis? There's, um, there, there is some form of early warning system, solar updraft, um, what's this? Ocean Thermal Energy Conversion. Nope. And it's not this one either. That's a prison. Uh, it's emergency services. No. Ah, here we go. Right, what's this? Short radio mast. Tall radio mast. Tsunami warning boy. That's the ones we want. Right. i uh, put a couple of these out here. Put one. There we go. I'll put a few of these out. Like that. And there we go. Right, so that is um, electricity zero, cost 4048 per week. So it's, it's, it's nothing to put a few of those in. So now we've got some early warning for tsunamis. Um, we, the, the wave is just moving its way up here slightly, so we may get a little bit of an issue over here. But 
for the most part, we don't need to worry about it. Now, what I was about to try and do was sort out this little absolute mess over here. We've got a bit of a pig's ear going on over here. Um, we need to... I got storage there. I got storage everywhere, but I see I've got so many crops coming in. I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. So the bakery there, we've got animal products and crops and flowers all coming in. And then pastries going out. So production value is $3,840 per week coming out for the pastries. Uh, I'm not sure where pastries are stored, though. Now, we do also have a... We've got, like, warehousing. So we go here, we've got warehouses. Um, a fancy yard for storing goods and products. A warehouse has three different operating modes. Uh, operating mode can be adjusted from the building's info panel. We've got a small warehouse, we've got a medium warehouse, we've got a large warehouse, and we've got a warehouse yard. So what is the difference between a, a warehouse yard and then the actual warehouses themselves? I'm not sure about this. But as far as I know, I don't want the warehouse to be up there. I want it to be further away. I don't want it to be in that zone there. I want it to be sort of down here somewhere. So a tsunami has struck the city. Take caution and avoid roads and waterfronts until the water recedes. So you've got an actual small warehouse there and then you've got the warehouse yard there. Freight truck count 10, capacity 100,000, and then this one is... Oh, I see, right, it's just the freight trucks. Uh, so we're going to go with a small warehouse. And we've got commercial and industrial zones down here. With the I'm All Ears of You, that's the IT district for offices. We've got homes, and then we've got loads of commercial districts down here as well. Now, the direct route down is sort of along there, down and across over to this bridge right here. Which is going to create a little bit of traffic. What I was thinking is to bring this warehouse um, close to this area, but not all the way down into it. But putting it over on this side would encourage them to come down and use that one there. And then not come down over, and, and so they're sort of closer to the districts down here. I don't know if this is a thing that I want to be doing or not. Um, balanced, stored resource, none at the moment. Uh, multiple problems, that is no resources selected. Oh, I see, right, we've got to have a, we do have to actually select a resource for this one. Um, power up there, I'm going to put just a little bit of commercial district in there just because I can, uh, and also in here as well, just I'm going to fill this little area in here with a small amount of commercial district. Not, not it's, So it's not a major thing. So our stored resource, you can choose all the different ones. You've got unique factory products, zoned industry, farming products, uh, oil, zoned industry goods. Take caution and avoid roads and waterfronts until the water recedes. Animal products, flowers, paper, plain timber, petroleum, plastics, glass, metals. Unique factory products. That's the one I want there. Unique factory. So it doesn't really matter. You get lots of different unique factory products. Attaching anything produced by a unique factory is a luxury product and be, can, can be sold in commercial zones. Cannot be imported. Has to be produced locally can be exported for money so we're going to keep this one as balanced so that it will it does have the ability to be um uh, it, it has the ability to be uh, sold we keep it if, by keeping it on balanced um and we're going to go into the electricity a minute and we're going to put a windmill right here that's going to be close ish to some of this stuff but not so close it's going to cause problems Space occupied. Uh, yeah, see, I, I can't put that one down there anywhere. I could put it there. Like that. That's going to join it all in with everything. And then we've got a little windmill there that's going to do a bit of extra as well. Right. So now we've joined everything in together with our little windmill. Actually, by doing that, I've just eliminated some of the use that I can have on there. That wasn't part of the master plan. I'll tell you what. I go out there and I move that one over here. 
What's it done now? It's still joined. That's good. That's all we need. We just need it to be joined on onto there uh, so it can still generate power. And then this bit over here, I can fill that back in again. And that will be a little bit of commercial zone there. So this can be sold in commercial zone. And what will happen is that the goods here, these here in the bakery, right? Not enough special goods. What? Oh, I need flour. Right, I need flour to come in here. I'm not getting enough flour coming in, right? I've got flowers here being produced, but this one, I think it emptied out. So we're off getting flour, but we don't currently have any. The city. Take caution and avoid roads and waterfronts until the water recedes. The next thing that we need to do is we need to sort out this other... Oh, hang on a minute. We've got another one down here that we want to deal with, which is another road. Uh, I'll go to a junction there. I'm going to put that as stop signs. So I'm going to do... I'm going to put that one that way, I think. Take that one off. And then this one, I can run like that. Okay. Um... No, what we've got now is we don't have any flour, but what we also don't have is we don't have any storage for flour, because this one here, this one stores crops, okay, only stores crops. We don't have anywhere that it's storing animal products. I don't actually have a warehouse at the moment for storing of animal products, so that's got to be a thing that we, we, we've got to bring one of those in. Uh, we've got a small warehouse here. If I look in the farming panel... We've got, over this side, we've got there a cattle shed, but that doesn't actually have very much in the way of storage. So we're not able to store any of it. And we've got like, the flour mill as well. Uh, slaughterhouse is done, and then you've got the large grain silo. This stores crops. It can be placed outside of the industry area if we want to encourage them to bring stuff out, but none of that is any good to us. Now, we've got the bakery there that's bringing in animal products and flour and crops. The animal products and the flour doesn't have anywhere to store. So we want to go back over to here. We want a, we're want we just going to go for a small warehouse yard. Actually, the, the warehouse and the warehouse yard are not very different in size. So I could bring that one over here. It's, it's going to break that, but if I if I drop it there... That's just the ordinary zone. So we, we can go into that one there. Has struck the city. Oh, goodness sake. Take caution we know. And waterfronts until the water recedes. Right. We know about the tsunami. Okay. You don't need to worry about the tsunami any longer. The big problem we got at the moment is the water coming up through here because of our new zone that we're going to be working on up here. We're not going to work on it yet. Um, we might need to build... More of a pinch point here. We still got a little bit of a problem with the water coming through up here. So let me just very quickly carve. Well, it's not carving so much as let me remove that. We want a slightly bigger brush about there, I think. Uh, no, we we what we want to do here is we want to bring that up. Actually, that brush strength does need to go down a bit because otherwise it's it's going to do too much. There, we're going to bring that like that. And what I want to do here is I want to just pull that in a bit. Like that. So that I got more of a pinch point on this water. This, this is the idea here, is I'm pinching this water down um, so that we don't have so much flowing through. I think that's part of our problem that we've got at the moment, is this um, the, the lack of pinch point and I, I should have a pinch point here so we've got a little bit of flooding coming across that bit I'm gonna take care of that by just moving that out like that yeah it's dipped a little bit just there but if I pinch this in a bit more up here I think that's gonna help take care of that because that's the plan right we get rid of that that should restrict the flow a little bit further downstream, which will hopefully stop the flooding down there in Silverwolf. Then we can go over here and we have a look in our warehouse. This is now empty. Right? So we've got the stuff coming here. It's being sold in, this, in our zone and we're getting some income from it. Weekly income is currently on about 13,000. This one here doesn't have any resources. It has no resources stored at the moment. So I can put in... 
I can put in an, um, I think you can only store one. I got lots of animal products in here. I don't have that much in the way of flour. So some flour is stored on there, but not a great deal. We are sort of, we're running a bit low on flour there in places. So I need to select one. I can only have one. I can't have multiple ones on here. So we're going to go balanced on there and uh, can be exported, cannot be imported, can only be produced locally. So that, that's a good thing. Um, so we'll do that. The animal stuff, the animal products, though, that's another thing that is, um, that they, they can only be imported, I think. I think it, animal products can only be imported. So we're going to build another warehouse. So crops is basically, the basic chain of command here is crops. Followed on by animal products, although they're, they're kind of like splits. It splits to animal products and flour. Um, but, I mean, we, we see that right here. I, I've, it, it's something that I've seen but haven't really paid attention to here. So, you've got right there, you've got... Um, pay, oh, hang on. No, we want farming. It says forestry there. Uh, there we go. See, you've got flour there and you've got animal products. So, I've, I've been overthinking it. That's my problem, is I've been seriously overthinking this. And then it goes into the commercial zones. Um, and so you want to you wanna pull it out of this zone into the commercial zone. So that's our final product down here. That's why I've got this warehouse down here with the unique factory products. They sell those in the commercial zones down there. Um, now if I look here, that one there... Uh, Paper produced by pulp mills here. So, look, we got got um, flour cannot be imported and animal products cannot be imported. They have to be produced locally. So crops can be imported, right? So you can import the base line, but you can't import anymore. Can be exported, can be stored in warehouses. And the same with that one. And then over here, it goes to can be exported for money, can be, export, uh, can be stored, cannot be imported. And then you sell it in the commercial zones or you export it. It's, it's one or the other. So if I'm looking here, let's get rid of the traffic thing a minute. If I'm looking in here, look, we got 245 crop, uh, tons of crops right there. And we've got a little bit that's being imported. We don't want to be importing any if we can help it. Uh, flowers, we've got 41 tons being diverted into flowers. And we've got 33 tons being diverted into animal products. So we've got an output there, weekly income from selling the resources, 8 tons, and 16 tons there. It doesn't seem to say where, you know, about the, the specialized products. How much is going into the specialized products over here? Because, you know, we've, we've got this. Now, I can increase this, all right? Operating normally, upkeep 288 per week. That's at 100%. If I put that up to 150%, the upkeep goes up a bit, but we're also able to really ramp up the production as well. Get a load more pastries coming out. Stored 8 of 16 tons. So I got one lorry there. That one's off on its way. Is that the delivering agricultural products? Uh, where is the vehicle? Farm, truck, bread and beyond. That's the bakery. There. Ami's Baking co uh, Company there. Ecostal the Hostel. Right, well, they're, they're off somewhere anyway. And then we've also got all the way over here, over there, we've got the warehouse here. So they can bring the stuff over here and they can store it there. And then they'll also sell it from there into a massive commercial district that we've got down here. So that's kind of the chain of command, and I was getting a little bit confused with how the chain of command worked and overthinking it a bit as well, which hasn't really helped matters. Now, we do have some slight traffic problems. We've got lots of storage for crops. We've got loads of storage for crops. Um, we've got some animal products coming out, and we've also now got a load of flour there. That's being stored. We've got the flour up here that's being stored. Because we've got the storage space for the flour... It means that our flour mills should, in theory, be able to be producing at a reasonable rate. Uh, that one there, we've got that one ramped right up to 150%. Production value 5,000 a week. 
And has it made a difference here? We're on 2,900 there. Really say much else about that one for a minute. But, um, yeah, it was the, the other thing that I wanted. We've got the small warehouse here. And you can actually see all the bags of flour that we've got being stored in here. I'm going to build another warehouse. And I'm going to use that one for animal products down here as well. So we'll go back into the industry area like that. And we go to the warehouses. And I'll go for a small warehouse. Just the same as the other one. And I'll drop that into there like that. So we haven't got anything selected yet. So I want to go to here. And I'll go for animal products on this one. So storage... Zero of 250 tons at the moment. So they'll bring in some animal products in there. It's not very far away from this factory, which is going to use them. Now, the other thing we've got is that one there, the lemonade. In order to get that one, we need um, crops and glass. It says right there we've got crops and glass. Um, then this one here requires animal products, crops, and plastic. Plastic is obviously going to come from one of the other items. Uh, food factory. This one needs animal products, flowers, paper, and plastic. So we, that's, that's more of a selection of items which we don't currently have. So really, we want to sort of focus on just a couple of them. Now, one other thing that we do have at the moment is we've got a freight train, cargo train terminal right there. But there's other things that we can now get. Now, if I look on here, freight train, uh, that just says cargo. It doesn't actually say very much else about it. But we know that we're loading cargo from this district. I'm now actually using this one better than I was. And because we've got the storage here as well, I still... Oh, I've got some in here. We've got eight tons in there. Uh, that's got 169 tons. They'll start exporting flour as well. Or at least I hope they do. Uh, but no, there's another thing that we don't have yet that we could do with. And that is under transport. We go to planes right here. Uh, not a blimp depot. Uh, the cargo airport hub. Now that's quite a big thing. We've got, a car we we've got just a plane cargo airport. This is a new one. We, we can put in a cargo airport here. Which is... Which is pretty good. I like the idea of putting in a cargo airport. Slope too steep. Right, that's, that's, that's all too steep for it up there. But the, the idea of putting in a cargo airport is pretty good. But then we've also got a cargo airport hub. So this one here, an airport specialised in handling large amounts of cargo instead of passengers. Cargo hangars and loading platforms for trucks allow the goods to be transported smoothly in and out of the cargo airport. Now, we don't need this one to be particularly close to this lot, but we do want it to have easy access to our industrial districts that we got there, as well as our new industrial district, the Mulberry Zone, that we've got over there. I will be naming the Mulberry Zone. But I just don't have a name at the moment, so next week I will probably have more names. But then we've got this one here, large airport specialised in handling large amounts of cargo instead of passengers. Cargo hangers and loading platforms for trucks. Um, this is cost, uh, water, electricity, noise pollution, 200. So what is the difference between the two? Noise pollution, 150 and 200 there. Uh, cargo hangers and loading platforms for trucks allow the goods to be transported smoothly in and out. This one here, cargo hangers uh, and loading platforms really say there's a lot of difference but I want I want the bigger one I I, so I think the bigger one's gonna be better I don't know why I just do so we need to find somewhere see there that one it says building must be placed beside roadside if I have a look here the mulberry zone is all the way up there so I can build the airport here and it's going to be close enough to our oil zone that we've got here and our agricultural zone down here. And we can build a forestry zone up here somewhere as well. I think it's going to work out quite nicely actually. So we want to go back into the transport in here. And we've got this one. So it's got to be placed on a roadside. Which is going to be right there. I mean, ideally I'd like it to be down here a little bit more. Oh, Slope too steep. There. There's the spot that it wants to go. So we, we, we've got, right about here, that's where it needs to go. So I need to put a road just along here. 
And we're obviously going we're going to be putting a six lane road in here. I will put a, a, a nice fancy road like that. And we'll drag that one along there. Straight line like that. And then we can go back into here. Grab our cargo airport slope too steep. There we go. Cargo airport is now up and running. Well, not quite up and running. Right, I can press the space bar at least. So I've got the road that goes to that point. And yeah, we've got some pipeline problems. We're going to need to just connect that one in a minute. I'll bring that one across like that. Pull it back down. Oh, hang on. To run that down there. We'll do two lines across here. Otherwise, it's just not going to fit properly. There. Right, that's joined in there. We've got... No, we don't have any pipeline problems anywhere. That should all be fitting. And we do have a slight problem with power here. So we're going to have to fit that one in a second. I don't want that. I want this. So we're going to run power from down here. Across right of Sepulis. Bring that up to that side up there. Because what could possibly go wrong with power lines right on the end of an airport like that. What could possibly go wrong with that? Garbage is piling up. Yeah, we, we, we don't care about the garbage piling up. So, the next thing that I want to do is I want to join that road in so that it joins into the rest of the infrastructure that we've got down here. But I've got to get it joined in in the right spot. Now, I could bring it to there, but I'd actually like it on this side of the bridge. I'd like the, um, the traffic to come down here. Although... We're going to have more stuff here, so I'm kind of thinking that we want two of them. We want one of them to come out of there. We want one of them to come out of here. That being said, that's going to mean removing one of my factories here. And I don't want to do that. So instead, what I'll do is if I find the border, which is about there, between the two, see here. Uh, right, so I, w I, want the, I want the transition line between the two there, which is on that building right there. I'm going to take a road, and it's going to come out from there, and it's going to go straight out that way, and it's going to go straight underground, like that. Then we're going to go for Freeform Road. That's going to be 180 degrees off of there, and that's going to go underground over this way. It's going to go like that. It's going to curve over that way, and then to about there. Before it comes back up and joins onto the surface up there. So there's that first road there. I'm also going to put another one from down here. Now I can't take one out of there. It's not going to work. It's not going to let me take anything out of that point. Probably for the best. We'll take it over this way ever so slightly. Or, actually, I could just take it off of here. Could I take it out of there? I can't, I can't do it straight off of there. That, that's, that's not going to work. And I can't do it off of there. That's not going to work either. I can take it off of the bridge, though. I can take it off of there. And I can come down this way. And go straight under the ground. Like that. See? And then that one will go in a straight line. That goes straight over this way. And... That'll join in. In theory, it's supposed to come up to here and it's supposed to join in. So we bring it up to that point there and then that'll join. Not sure why it's done that. That's a little bit odd, that is. I'm going to remove that bit a second and go back down here. Again, why are you being really odd like that? That seems a very strange thing to happen. Did you know you can change the type of an existing road? Yes, I did. Um, so, I'm going to go back to that one and drop that down. So, we're on here. It should join in here, but it, it's not really get why it's trying to come up to the surface 
There, look. See, it's, it's trying to hop to the surface and then drop back down again. On that. With that. Very, very weird kind of junction that it's doing there. And I, I don't know what that's all about. So, in, I tell you what. Instead of doing that, what we can do is... I'm going to bring that to the surface. If I drop that off a minute, I go back on here and I bring that down. I'll bring that out from there. That might be something to do with it. If I drop down here, bring that round. There we go. Right, join those two together. It's not the most elegant of roads there, but it does go through. That's going to then bring it into the airport, which they can use up here. So we've now got a cargo airport hub up here. Um has an integrated cargo railway station. So where is... That's the next bit that I want to bring in, is I want to join in the railway on this part. And that's going to be fairly simple, because the railway is just down here, and I don't actually have that much going between them. So we've got... Um, that's a straight one there that goes out here, and it can go straight across if we want it to. It can run across that way there, look. And that can go across there. So I can take a line from there and run that one out. We're going to go back to here on the railway. We're going to take that one there. And this is going to come out from here. And it's going to join that one. It's going to run all the way across here like this. It's going to join in there. So we've now got an integrated train and road network is all joined in together and it should in theory be able to go between the whole lot so this other one up this side this one's going to come out of here and it's going to go across there so we've got our new district up there as well I'll take that one actually and that's going to come round like that that's going to go to there it's kind of the, the rough idea of where that one's going to go. And then it's going to come back down that way. And it's going to come to there. And then I'm going to do one line that goes that side. And I'm going to do another line that's going to come out this way here. And it's going to join in on... Okay, it's doing some strange things there. Because I need to bring it out a little bit further like that there. So we'll join that one in on there as well. So we've now got trains can go both ways. They can come up to there. There's going to be a station there, which will um, deal with the Mulberry Zone. And then there's going to be a big bypass on that one as well, which is going to come straight out this way. It's going to go... Basically, it's just going to go like that and then join straight down onto there, like that. So we don't have to go through the station up there. We can bypass it completely. We can come down this way. Uh, that one there is going to go between the two. I'm also going to do a... No, I'm not going to do any extra. I don't think I need to worry about anything extra on there at the moment. Um, an extra one here. Again, it doesn't look like I need to worry about any extras down here either. Those trains are moving. All of those trains are moving. The trains are moving down here. These trains are moving. These trains are all moving. And these trains over this way. Again, they're all moving. So all the trains at the moment are flowing freely. And they're actually working as they're supposed to be. Uh, that's ready for our next zone up there. We've got... A cargo airport over here that is working. I don't have garbage um, disposal on here at the moment. I've got garbage up there, but what we need to do now, let's just take a look at... Well, first up, we're going to have a look at pollution. Animal sheds create pollution and the flowers. So we were getting some pollution from the farming, but we kind of expect that. Um, the rest of it... It's looking pretty good. We got no pollution over here. We got a bit around here. The big industry there. And we got a little bit with the recycling centers. And then we've got our gorgeous, beautiful lake up here that is still filling up with poop. It's looking good. So then we can go and we can have a look at garbage. So we've got good garbage coverage over all of this part of the city. 
It's a little bit poorer over here, especially down there by the airport. That's not quite got, it's not got so good a coverage. This is doing all right with garbage up here. All of this area here is doing all right with garbage, except for that one building there. Um, up here, it's not too bad. We do have service from those up there, but we don't really have much in the way of garbage service over on this bit. So we've got a road that goes over to there, and we've got a road that goes over to there. I'm thinking maybe we should add another road from directly off of there, and that can come up round as well. And the one other thing that I think that we should consider adding in over here is some more garbage disposal. We've, we're kind of limiting the amount of garbage that we've, you know, garbage disposal that we've got at the moment. And I think I need to actually start adding in some more. I mean, I like the idea of just having that one pit service the whole area. But it doesn't seem to work quite as effectively as I'd hoped it would. Okay, so apparently I can't put that one further along and that's a shame. Okay, fine. I won't do that. I will move this one and put them cheek by jowl right there. There we go. And then I'm going to come off of this road here, and that one is going to also join in. I'm going to take that one straight north like that. Um, but that is going, no, down. That one to drop down like that. There. And then head this way and I'd say actually join into that one we've got like a double junction in here so I'm going to just see what junctions we've got in here so we've got traffic lights I don't want traffic lights in here we'll put a stop sign on there and we'll put a stop sign on that one there that's all we want I don't want anything too complex on there doesn't need anything else that's all we got. That's, that's all we're going to take on there. So we've got now a straight line up through there to come up around there. That's also going to give the incineration plants up there a little bit of access to some of these areas down here as well. Uh, and we've got a little bit here of not enough customers for our stores. We've got a lot of stores over here, but we don't have the customers to serve them at the moment. Got a big lot of customers down over here. There doesn't seem to be customers coming up this side. So maybe we need... I mean, I thought that people generally just kind of went all the way around. And then these here... What have we got? What are the problems here? Uh, you, not enough customers. That is, it's the same symbol all the way through. Is not enough customers. So all of this is uh, customer problems. We've got allow intercity trains. Disable this if you prefer to use this station only for local trains. I'm going to leave that for a minute because I do have a station coming through. We've got this one here, look. So we've, we've got some passengers that will come up through here and they do use it. Passengers service last week, though, it, st it still says zero. I'm not really sure about that one. It, it all seems to be where well, Everything seems to be flowing at the moment. So let's go back to the Henry Ashworth estate and have a look over here. So now 37, uh, yeah, 3750. We're making some profit on here. Crops, we've got a decent output on everything now. We've got loads of animals coming out. We've got flowers coming out. We've also got pastries here. The animal products, that's, that's piling through quite nicely as well. And we can have a look down here. This one, it's not got a lot in there. But we know that we're selling stuff in the commercial zones. And then we've got our airport over here which is bringing in trains and it's also dealing with other stuff as well. We've got train coming in right here, look. 80% full, that's running straight in. Where have you come from? Owner cargo train terminal. It's taking it, well, it's taking it to there. Let's have a look what happens once he goes in. He stops and he empties out completely. So we're export, it looks like we're exporting stuff. That's what it looks like on there. So if we've done all that bit, kind of the next thing that I want to do, we can either start building another farm or we want to start going and building the next area. And I think really we want to go for the next area. So we've got the Mulberry Zone up here. That one there. We haven't actually zoned anything in the Mulberry Zone at the moment. Um, so we're going to want roads first. Roads has got to be our top priority. We're going to go with the ones with the trees on. We're going to make it look pretty. 
Um, I do want to bring that back up onto the surface and I'm going to go for squares like that. So let's have a look first and just see where the edge of the district... Right, that's inside the district there. That doesn't actually matter that it's inside the district. The oil is kind of around the main, the, the middle bits in there. Uh, you can see where the oil is on there. If I get rid of that a second and we go onto here, that's where the main oil is around there. So I want to just put a road along here to start with. That's going to be our first marker. I'm going to put one... Straight along there, like that. And then what I'm going to do, actually, is I'm just going to do this as a 90-degree road up to there. I'm go up a little bit further, I think. And then we'll come across here. Put that on 90 over there. So we make this perfect square all the way around. That's on... 90 all the way down to there, and then you right there, you're going to go at 180. Right, so we've we've got the outline. There is the outline. I want to put a train station in a minute, which is going to be just an ordinary cargo terminal. Uh, we've got multi-platform train. That's an end station I don't want, so it is the... Uh, allows tourists. No, we don't want that. So I want to put this one in here. Drop that one in there. That's going to be the main route coming in and out of this area. So I want to remove a couple of these tracks like this. Then we can put them back on. Uh, I want to bring that one in around like that. So that it's it just I just want it to look like it flows a little bit better for the, the actual track. That's all. Bring that around to there, and then that goes into there. Right. So that's that's flowing quite nicely, I think. And so we've got our train station that goes up there, and then it, it so it divides off there. So they've got a, a loop down here. It's not going to interfere with them at all. Although they do have to go through here, which is a little bit of a problem. So in order to bypass that bit, we're gonna go out here. Where are we going to go? We're going to go just off the side a little bit like that and straight down. And we're going to go underneath here. Over to that side. And then we're going to come back up and join back onto the track up there. I'm hoping that will allow the trains to bypass that whole area. If they need to, then they can go up around there and go wherever they want to go. We've got... A bit of a choke point right why are you choked up here which way are you all trying to go you are trying to go down this way you're stuck on there and i see right so i got that one there is stuck trying to come in through here but why are you trying to go up there anyway we've got them trying to go in the one underneath for the most part the trains do seem to flow fairly well now it's just some of them, they get a little bit confused by the look of it. You know, generally speaking, they are all actually going where they should be. And they're all flowing quite cleanly. It's just we get the occasional train that doesn't go quite where we want it to. So, like, that one's snaking off over there. Uh, but it looks like we're getting quite a few trains coming from this direction... Wanting to go over there. And maybe they're coming from in the tunnel there. I know what we can do. If we go to our routes and junctions right here a minute. And then I go to... Right, uh, well that's on routes there. So I want to go here like that. And I click on that one. Right, so we've got routes coming up here. Got that one down there. It's that one there that I want. I want this one here. So we've got a few of them that are going up that way. And then if I click down here, look. I've got more of them that are going up that way. So really, we want to try and bypass that bit there. And we can do that fairly easily. I can do that. I can put in another train track that is just going to just cure that bit. This is going to be the last thing that we're going to be able to do today. We're going to We're going to run out of time unfortunately. So we can take this one here and I can bring a track out there. I can put that one straight down under the ground like this. 
That one's going to go up there. Get to that point. And it's going to come up there like that. That's all I need to do. Put that up through there, and then it'll bypass a whole load of this nonsense that we got going on down here. We've still got choke points down here. and But why are you stopped? Right, so we've got choke point coming up here, and we've got... Uh, right there. There's our problem. We've got a choke point on here with... This track here is not long enough to allow the trains to go through. See, the, the one train gets to there and then it blocks the other one. And so we have a three-point sort of tie on there, which we don't want. So we're going to need to just clear that. Change that around a bit. It shouldn't be too difficult to change that. If I put this one here, bring that one out that way. There like that. there and I'll join that one in under there so that's a just it's just got a slightly longer line on it it's not massively longer but it's enough that a whole train can fit in between it I'm just going to join that one out across to there I'm gonna need to put it to about that point I think and then join you on there like that right so now I've got that, I've just lengthened that ever so slightly to allow the trains to fit through. The rest of them are fitting through here. I've got trains coming out there and wanting to head along, but they're also now bypassing a whole load of the other stuff and coming out this way. Running straight into that tunnel down there. And also running into the tunnel here. We've got a little bit of a queue down here. It's queuing coming in, but which way, which way are you queuing? Why are you... Right, I see. That one's coming in there. That one's going up that way to head off over there. So we, we've we still got a few of them that go up that way instead of coming down this track. You are... Again, we've got this whole problem here. Oh, no. We're, you're trying to head down this way, and you're trying to go up. So I've got these two merging on one point there. That's no good either. That doesn't work. So we can't have them merging on a point there. So we've got to do something about that. Why? Uh, what, what could we do about that that we can stop that little bit from happening? I think, actually, the best way that we can do this is if I remove that one there. That's going to change what those other tracks do. But instead of having that there, I remove that one completely. And... I'll take this one over here, and I'm going to run that out from there like that. And we're going to go up, bring it round, and then push it in like that. So that's going to come from the top. So they can still go that way, but they've got to go up and on round. I think that's a better way for it. This one here is that classic three-point tie, which we don't want. Uh, so I've only th I think I've only got to remove one of those in order to cure that problem and that problem is going to be cured by bringing the track out from up there instead and i can go into there like that there we go so that one will come in there now i've got extra trains in here that's fine i'm gonna remove that as well that's, that's going to encourage everything to start moving in the directions that it should, and then I can join that back in again. Put you straight across onto there, and join that track back in again. There. So now, all the trains should go in the direction that they are supposed to go. Those will go up through. That one will run up through there, and it'll stop. It's just enough there for one train to fit in that little piece down through there. The other ones can all run through. That one goes on up. They can turn around. Everybody can leave. Everybody can go exactly where we want them to go. Right. Bigger loops. Bigger loops is the answer. That's what we got to... we got to make sure we've got bigger loops on all of it. And then they will fit through where they're supposed to fit through. I've got one here that stopped. You're stopped. Because you're stopped coming down in here. Uh, we just lower that down a minute and what have we got here 
That one's coming up there. That one gets stuck in there. So the you... Well, what it... You're not even waiting on anything. You're coming up that direction. And then... Oh, I see. Right. We've got a little bit of a problem here on the loops. So I... Which way are they going? Um... I've been told I should be using some one-way tracks as well in order to help this flow. And maybe I should. So that one there, do I want to put anything in that way? Or would it be better if I sort of did that some other way? Because that one comes down. It's this piece here. This is, this is too short. So what we'll do is we'll remove that one. And that can go up. It can go up that way can turn over to there or it can go down that way and get hung up on that big mess uh, I need it to be able to what I need is for it to be able to loop round on itself so if I remove that one there that one's gone I need it to be so track if I want them to go into there I need them to be able to go up here loop round and come back in so I could do that actually. If I go, if I go, no, I don't want to do that. I want to go to here. And I want to bring it back up so that we're on the surface. And what I'll do is I'll simply take out a piece of track here. And I'll bring that round there like that. And I'll allow that to loop back in. So all I've got there is just a, a piece of track that'll allow it to loop back in. I don't even need that extra one there. There's no need for that one. But I've got a, I got a, basically I've got a turntable on there. Now here, I got one train there. I got one. I, I got trains here. What are you lot doing? Which way are you all trying to go? I got a four-way tie on this particular junction right here, which doesn't make any sense. So I'm gonna say we're gonna put. We'll, we'll get rid of that in a minute, and we'll go back into here. Uh, junctions right there. We'll put a stop sign on that side and on that side. And then I want a just... No, that is the priority route there. It doesn't show priority route, but um, that, is, that should be the priority route. That one will come up. This one here... Which way are you trying to go then? Oh, you're coming down this way. So you're coming down here. You're coming down here. You're stopped there. That's flowing through. You're stopped. There's no real reason why those should be stopped down there. I've got... i got a load of logs here. That's heading right over to the other side of the map with the logs. They're moving down in this direction a little bit. And we've got traffic on those. That one's coming out through. And then more trains are running up through. All right, so far, it seems to now be working. Everything is freeing up, and it's kind of moving. It is a little bit blocked in places, but for the most part, it seems okay. We've got these stations here. I could actually, in order to make this run a little bit easier, because we've actually got planned routes running through here, what I should do is I should take that one off of there like that and run it into there like that so I got just that little extra little bit in there and it should then the passenger trains should not necessarily come around there and go up but they might go that way instead that might just make my life a little bit easier or, or make their lives a little bit easier I don't know that, that could that could again it could be too much too many seem to be causing me problems look right here it's that bit. I want to get rid of that bit. I've got uh, I've got a turntable now, so I can get rid of that one. Up. There. I don't have to keep that bit in there anymore. What they can do, what the trains can do now, is they can come up. They can turn round. I've got this big loop here that they can spin round on. They can come back down, and then they can go through there if they need to. I've got... Trains can go that way. They can't go that way. They can't go from here over there. That's fine. Excuse me. Right, now, is everything flowing freely? That's the big question now. Are they going where they're supposed to go? 
They seem to be. We, we've we got them using the turntable now. Uh, the, the turnaround. They seem to be using that one. They're coming down here. They are still getting a bit blocked. Anyway, I've gotten sidetracked again with the trains. I always get sidetracked with the trains. Um, the the cargo stuff does actually seem to be working. I mean, we, we, they are quite... Near, well, they're nearly empty. I'm guessing maybe I should just get rid of that station there. If I was to remove that one, it might make life a little bit easier up around here. Uh, so we don't have quite so many running through. I'll decide on that later. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.